It's weekend and we're back with Company Nama where we give you the corporate and startup highlights of this week. I'm Shreshtha Tiwari. Over to the corporate world updates first. Aditya Birla Fashion has announced the purchase of 51% majority stake in women's clothing maker TCNS Clothing. The deal has been fixed between the two companies for 1,650 crore rupees. AB Fashion will also raise 800 crore rupees. Under this deal, 29% stake will be bought from the promoter group and a conditional open offer will also be launched at 503 rupees which will increase the total stake to 51%. Under the deal, TCNS will merge with ABFRL and TCNS shareholders will get 11 shares of ABFRL for every 6 shares held. Apart from ABFRL, private equity investors like Reliance Retail, Nika Trent as well as TPG Capital were also in the race to buy TCNS. The deal will strengthen the portfolio of women wear brands of AB fashion. The stock of Tata Steel, the country's largest steel producer, has fallen by about 13% in the last one year and the company's problems and challenges don't seem to be ending, especially regarding the UK business. The company has issued a warning of uncertainty uh, regarding the continuation of a UK business. The two main reasons for this are the bad market conditions and uh, the UK markets, uh, uh, UK government's in the inadequate support. The biggest uncertainty in the UK business is the government support because the company has to shift its steel production process from natural gas and coal to electricity to cut carbon emissions. The company will get 300 million pounds from the government, but decarbonizing the Port Talbot pla plant would alone would cost up to 3 billion pounds. The company has sought for 1.5 billion pounds from the UK government. Nestle is competing with the companies including Tata Consumer Products and the Kraft Heinz Co. to buy Capital Foods, which makes food products and in ingredients under the Ching's Secret and Smith & Jones brands. Investment bank Goldman Sachs is valuing the company, which saw $55 million worth of sales last year at between $500 million and $800 million. ITC is another potential contender that is also being considered by the sellers and their adv uh, advisors from the initial screening list of potential candidates. Nestle is working on an all-cash offer, while some of the others like Kraft have suggested acquiring up to 75% of the company and taking it public. Any transaction would likely value Nestle at more than $1 billion, according to the people. MG Motor India, a subsidiary of China's SAIC Motor, is looking to dilute its stake in the company to Indian entities to fund its expansion plans. It plans to raise 5,000 crore rupees, which will be utilized, among others, to establish a second manufacturing facility in Gujarat. The new unit will more than double the company's installed capacity to 3 lakh units from 1 lakh 20,000 units. MG Motor said that it plans to offer a majority stake to local partners and investors over the next two to four years. The company is reportedly in advanced negotiations for equity sale with Reliance Industries, Hero Group, Premji Invest and JSW Group. Go first and Adani, two big names that continue to remain in headlines this week. While we talk about them, there are many others too that were on the radar this week. Let's find out. In a setback for the Adani Group, two group firms Adani Transmission and Adani Total Gas have been dropped from the MSCI India Index. The order will be effective at the close of a trading on May 31st. The Global Index took the decision as part of its quarterly comprehensive index review. Meanwhile, Adani Enterprises announced that the company's board will hold a meeting on May 13th to approve the proposal of a raising of funds. The group is likely to raise about $2.5 to $3 billion through equity sale in Adani Enterprises, Adani Green and Adani Transmission. This comes after the company withdrew its 20,000 crore rupees follow-on public offer in February following the Hindenburg report. Details of the meeting were not known at the time of this recording. Also, the group has decided not to, not to take any more debt to fund expansion. Also, the Supreme Court heard the pleas on the Adani Hindenburg row on May 12th, almost two months after it had asked Market Regulator Securities and Exchange Board of India and an experts panel to probe the matter. 
Lenders to go first will likely classify the airline's account as a non-performing asset in the current quarter. Meanwhile, two more aircraft lessers, GY Aviation and SFV Aircraft Holding, on Thursday moved appellate tribunal NCLAT against the order passed by the NCLT allowing go first voluntary insolvency plea. SMBC Aviation Capital had already moved uh, NCLAT on Wednesday, hours after the NCLT admitted go first in insolvency plea. Island based GY Aviation is the largest lesser of go first with nine aircrafts, while SFV Aircraft Holdings has leased out one aircraft to the Wadia Group owned company. Now, the total number of lessers before the NCLAT against go first insolvency has become three. The NCLAT on Thursday heard the petition of SMBC Aviation Capital and amid insolvency crisis, the budget airline is expected to resume flights on May 24th. The airline has chalked out a business plan to restart its operations with 23 aircrafts, according to a media report. Meanwhile, Air India uh, has offered jobs to more than 200 pilots of the bankrupt budget airline. The pilots are being roped in at the same salary as other Air India pilots with a similar work experience. The Delhi High Court has upheld the ruling of an arbitration panel favouring Reliance Industries and its foreign partners in a dispute over gas migration from fields operated by state-owned Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Limited. The Oil Ministry had approached the Delhi High Court after an international arbitration panel rejected its $1.55 billion fine on Reliance and its partners for selling gas that migrated from ONGC's fields in the East Coast Krishna Godavari Basin to their block in the same area. The Anil Ambani promoted Reliance Infrastructure's Delhi Air uh, Airport Metro Express on Monday filed a contempt petition in the Delhi High Court against the centre the Delhi government and the Delhi Metro Rail Corporation for willful and deliberate disobedience of the court's order directing the payment of 4,700 crore rupees arbitration award the company had won. The matter will be taken up for hearing next on August 18th. India's market regulator has issued legal notices to government-owned PTC India and its financial services unit PTC India Financial Services demanding explanations of alleged Corporate Governance Lapses PTC India, a power trading company and PTC India Financial Services, a finance company, has been given 21 days to reply to the show cost notice. Sources say that investigations by SEBI had found preliminary evidence of alleged violations of governance and listing norms. The SEBI investigation followed allegations levelled by three independent directors of PTC India Financial Services in January 2022. Following the company's response to the show cost notice, SEBI will pass a final order with possible consequences ranging from monetary penalties to a ban from cap uh, capital markets. The Income Tax Department is conducting searches at uh, Mankind Pharma office in New Delhi and the IT sleuths are carrying out the searches at the company's office and nearby locations. The department is also checking documents and people are being questioned in the matter. The company's shares fell as much as 5.5% after this news came out, which comes days after the company listed on exchanges with sharp gains. During the day, the stock also touched a low of 1,306.65 rupees. The company made its stock market debut and closed the day with 32.4% gains. Against the issue price of 1,080 rupees, the stock was listed at 1,300 rupees. Mankind Pharma raised 4,326 crore rupees in the biggest IPO of 2023. Well, that was all about the corporate world. Moving on to this week's big updates from the startup world, let's find out. This has been a bad week for startups. Four of them uh, saw their valuations cut sharply. Invesco, an existing investor in Swiggy, has slashed the food delivery firm's valuation by 33% to $5.5 billion from $8.2 billion as per a regulatory filing in the US. And uh, this is the second time Invesco has cut its valuation in the food delivery firm. Earlier in October last year, Invesco had reduced the valuation from $10.7 billion to about $8 billion, a cut of around 33%. US investor Vanguard has also slashed ride-hailing firm Ola's valuation by 35% amid global macroeconomic conditions, reducing its worth to about $4.8 billion. 
According to a report in TechCrunch, Vanguard cut the valuation of ANI Technologies, Ola's uh, holding firm, by 35% and disclosed this in its report to investors. And fintech company Pine Labs and PharmEasy also saw their valuation slashed by 38% and 21% respectively. U.S. investor Neuberger Berman closed, uh, disclosed it, this in its regulatory filing. And this has been a bad week for startups. So four of them saw their valuations cut sharply. Invesco, an existing investor in Swiggy, has slashed the food delivery firm's valuation by 33% to $5.5 billion from $8.2 billion as per a regulatory filing in the US. This is the second time Invesco has cut its valuation in the food delivery firm. Earlier in October last year, Invesco had reduced the valuation from $10.7 billion to about $8 billion, a cut of around 33%. US investor Vanguard has also slashed ride-hailing firm Ola's valuation by 35% amid global macroeconomic conditions, reducing its worth to about $4.8 billion. According to a report in TechCrunch, Vanguard cut the valuation of ANI Technologies, Ola's holding firm, by 35% and also disclosed this in its report to investors. And a fintech company Pine Labs and PharmEasy also saw their valuation slashed by 38% and 21% respectively. US investor Neuberger Berman disclosed this in its regulatory filing. And amid ongoing funding woes in startups, according to a report, the world's most valuable edtech startup Baiju's is close to raising $1 billion through a mix of equity and debt instruments. Baiju's plans to raise $700 million from equity and the remaining $300 million through debt. It is believed that this funding will be based on Baiju's current valuation of $22 billion and the deal can be completed in the next one month. For this funding, the company is in talks with US asset management firms like Oak Tree Capital Management, Apollo Management and Davidson Kempner Capital Management. Well, with that, it's a wrap on Company Nama this week. We'll be back next Saturday again. But to get your daily corporate updates, keep watching Corporate Central, Money Nine's daily dose on corporates and market. Have a safe weekend and don't forget to tune in to Money Nine.